Oh, I'm live. Okay, cool. For those of you that were watching, my internet just went out. <laughs> it says now that I'm live. Okay, so I'm live. We're back on. Let me finish what I was talking about. We were talking about the fact that the goal above all goals should be that we are to be conformed to the image of God, dear son. And that will help us to deal more effectively with failure when we don't reach a goal. Because even failure itself can become a means by which we can be conformed to the image of God's dear son. It's just as dependent upon how we respond to the failure. Meaning simply this, we want to respond to that failure as the image and the likeness of God. We want to respond as the image and the likeness of Christ. Is everybody back on? Oh, are we back on? I'm, I still don't have any internet. Hang on, everybody. We're trying to get this set up. What are you coming up? You're on Facebook? Yeah. Okay. So I should let them know to go to Facebook? Yeah. Okay, we're just, we're just going to get everything set up here. My internet's still not on, so I'm operating off of my phone. All right, so like I was saying before, even when it comes to failure, even when it comes to failure, we can be conformed to the image of his son. As a matter of fact, we use that to be conformed. Because whether or not we succeed as a goal has nothing to do with whether or not we are conformed. See, you may not be able to reach every single goal you reach, but one goal you can reach every single day or one goal that you can strive after. And even if you fail at it, you can get up and go for it again because you're divinely empowered by God to do so. That is, to, that is the goal of being conformed to the image of his dear son. I may not reach all my financial goals. I may not reach all my business goals. I may not reach all of my relationship goals because other people are involved. But I can always be conformed to the image of God's dear son. So what I'm saying to you is, even when things don't turn out the way that you want, here's what you want to do. How am I supposed to respond to that? I'm supposed to respond according to the image and the likeness of God, uh, of Christ. So even when things don't turn out the way that I want, that can be used to help me to respond according to the will of God. I can respond being conformed. I can use it to glorify God. God. I might grieve the loss of, of reaching the goal, but I, but I don't have to become down. I don't have to become depressed because my ultimate goal, which I can still reach, even if the other goal, and sometimes, again, you don't reach a goal because there are things outside of your control. There might be people that was involved with you reaching your goals. Those people didn't do what they were supposed to do, so therefore you didn't reach your goal. I know people who are trying to resolve their marriage and one spouse decided, you know what, I'm out. I don't want to work on this anymore. They did not reach their goal. The spouse who wanted their marriage to work, they didn't reach their goal, not because they stopped doing the work, it's because the other spouse did. But you know what they would still choose to do and I would encourage them to do? We would grieve the loss. We would deal with the hurt. We would deal with the pain. We would deal with the anger, but we would still seek to be conformed to the image of God's Dear son, sometimes it took some work. We had to work through pain. We had to work through grief. We had to work through loss. Sometimes we had to work through discouragement and depression, but we got back on track. And they now today are still living flourishing lives because they're seeking to be conformed to the image of God's dear son. So what I'm saying to you is that no matter what, one goal we can always pursue, one goal we can always reach on a day by day basis is to be conformed to the image of God's dear son. When our, our number one goal is to be Christ-like, then even the delay or the non-fulfillment of a goal becomes a means. The failure of reaching a goal becomes a means of being conformed more to his image. James chapter one, verse two through four says this, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work. Why? So that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. When we are mature and complete, what are we doing? We are once again being conformed to the image of God's dear son. So this is something that we can do even when things don't go the way we like. We like. Even when we are in the midst of tests and trials, we can be conformed to the image. Like It's like now, internet went out. My internet is still not back on. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking at my computer. Internet's still back on. Does that mean I, I got to start cursing and, and, and cursing the computer and cursing the internet? No, I can be conformed still, even in the midst of this, to the image of God's dear son. One of the things, by the way, that helps is the fact that Karen and I do this for a living. So when something doesn't work, we, we basically have been trained to say, okay, move to the next option. <laughs> 
because we do online trainings all the time. So thankfully, we have that training behind us. Okay, so the goal of being conformed to the image of God's dear son can help you from becoming too discouraged, getting down, getting depressed when other goals are delayed or when other goals simply cannot be reached. When there is failure, use your failure to be more conformed to the image of God's dear son. Always keep that as the number one priority. Doesn't mean you may not be discouraged. It doesn't mean that you won't be discouraged, that you may not feel down. Work through that, but utilize it to be conformed to the image of his son. And then here's the last thing. This is the other reason why being conformed is so important. Seeking to be conformed to his image and all that we do in all of our goals, in all of our new year resolutions, it will bring improvement to all of your life. Listen, being conformed to the image of God's dear son is going to make you better. You're going to become a better person. And if you become a better person, your relationships can't help but become better. If you become a better person, things in your life, let me put it like this. If you become a better person, your life can't help but become better. I have a saying that I like, this, that I like to often use, as you are, so your world will be. Meaning, as you are, what you touch, what you influence, it's going to, that's going to impact the world around you. What you, what you are will impact and it will influence and it will shape what you can touch and you influence. So if you become better, the world around you that you touch and that you influence directly, it becomes better. Your relationship with your children will become better. Your relationship with your spouse can become better. I always tell people that even if you don't have a good relationship with me, I can have a good relationship with you. Meaning I can still treat you. Even if you, you, it, Put like this in Jesus' words. Somebody curse you, you bless them. If somebody mistreats you, you know, you do good to them. See, I can relate to you well. I can relate to you in a godly manner. I can relate to you as Christ, even though you may not relate to me that way. Okay? I can still be conformed to the image of his dear son. I can go the extra mile with you, even though you may not be acting right. Or let me put it another way. If I'm not acting right, you can go the extra mile with me. I might be acting like a fool. You don't got to be a fool and join me. You can still be conformed to the image of God's dear son, even if other people are not doing that. So when we improve, which being conformed to his image, I, I share with you before, and I use marriage because it's it's one of the most Concrete examples I can give you, and I've seen it over and over. Whenever people in a marriage, when they make the decision and they start being more Christ-like, they make the decision, I'm going to be conformed to his image. I'm going to be like Jesus. When they start to do that, they get better in their responses. They get better in how they relate. And guess what? Their marriage automatically begins to get better, almost automatically. And that's why I tell people a lot of times, I said, the key really is not to focus on your marriage. The key is to focus on you in terms of, am I being more conformed to his image? Am I becoming more like Christ? Now, we just don't tell people to do that. We also give people, and for those of you that have been with me for a while, you know, we talk about tools, we talk about strategy. How do you get your, how do you, you let, let go of bitterness? How do you forgive? So you can be more conformed to the image of Christ. We talk about, we show people how to do that, okay? But the essence of all of it, it all serves one purpose, to be conformed to the image of his dear son. So, one of the other reasons you want to make this a meta goal is because when you are conformed to his image, and by the way, when I'm talking about being conformed to his image, I'm not just talking about outward behavior. I'm talking about being conformed to his image in how you think, in how you feel, in the decisions you make, and in your ongoing behavior. You want to be conformed to his image in each of those areas because each of those areas are interactive. What you do behaviorally comes out of what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and what you're deciding. What you're thinking, feeling, and deciding is going to influence how you behave. Now, if you do it correctly, how you behave can influence what you're thinking and feeling and deciding too, or what you're thinking and feeling. But you, you, but it's not just behavior. It's not just external. It's also internal. We are transformed by the renewing of our minds. And that includes not only your thoughts, your intellect, but also your will and your emotions. Okay. So these are reasons again, why we want to be conformed to his image. Number one, if we're going to, if we're going to walk in his spirit, if we're going to walk in his divine life and power, newness of life, we've got to make God's number one priority and passion, our number one priority and passion, which is to be conformed to the image of his son. We got to make that goal over all other goals. Doesn't mean it eliminates other goals, but other goals become subservient to that goal and it serves that goal. 
uh, it, that goal helps us to become to keep from becoming too discouraged, too depressed when other goals are not reached because we can always f reach that goal no matter what. And then number four, if we're seeking to be conformed to his image as the number one goal, we will become better as people. We will become better in how we relate and respond to others. And as we become better, the world around us that we touch and influence, it becomes better. So in closing, well, not just in closing, let me ask you this first. Have you decided as we move into this new year, have you decided to make conformity to the image of God's dear son, your number one priority. I seek to live that as my priority, but as I went over this message again, and this is a message I actually taught many years ago, and I was going through my notes looking for something else, and actually I planned to talk to you about something else. And I felt as I was looking over the notes, I thought, I think I'm supposed to talk about this again. And as I read over the notes again, I was gently convicted and motivated again to make sure to reaffirm for myself that my number one goal and all that I do is to be conformed to the image of God's dear son. So have you decided that? Let me encourage you. Decide on purpose. Decide with intentionality to make this new year number one goal and priority. Embrace God's goal, God's priority, God's passion as your own. Join with God in that. God, your goal, you predestined for me to be conformed to the image of your son. God, that's my number one goal in this year. Yes, I have other goals, but other goals will now serve this goal to be conformed to the image of your son. Let everything that you think, everything that you feel, everything that you decide, say, and do be shaped and motivated by this goal in this year. That's my message for you today as we move into a new year starting tomorrow. Here's my final word. Colossians chapter one, verse 27 through 29 says this, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. We've got two organizations which are both connected to each other. One is our fellowship, the Oasis. The other one is our Christian organization called the Center for Christian Training and Development, also known as CCTD. Matter of fact, the Oasis is under the, or, the, the major organization of the Center for Christian Training and Development, which Karen and I started years ago. The purpose of that organization, and, and actually this first scripture right here, Colossians chapter 1, uh, verse 28, is our mission statement. What's the mission of the Center for Christian Training and Development? It is to preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. That's our mission. It is to teach, it is to train, it is to help people to be conformed to the image of Christ. And I wanna renew once again my our, our commitment to you in this new year to help you grow to help you to become more and more conformed to the image of God's dear son this is the commitment that i'm making to you on behalf of CCTD and the oasis for those of you that are members of the oasis that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be helping you and and it's my fresh renewed commitment to help Everyone who joins us, who listens to us, who becomes part of our trainings, we're going to be doing trainings this year that deal with emotions, that deals with renewing the mind, helping people to become, become coaches that can work in, their coaches, work in their churches to help people to overcome spiritual blocks. We are committed to doing that afresh and anew in the year 2023. And I just want to say for you who have joined us over the past year, uh, thank you so much for being a part of our study here online. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for those who've, who've given support. Thank you so much. I'm just saying again, we are committing to doing everything we can to teach, to train, to coach you, to be conformed to the image of God's dear son, to help you to fulfill God's primary, God's priority and passion, which is your, hopefully your priority and passion. It is our priority and passion that you are conformed to the image of of his dear son. All right, we finished this without still my <laughs> internet is not back on, but thank God for wireless. Thank God for this technology that we were able to do this. We will be back here, Lord willing, next week. We're going to get back onto our uh, uh, series on uh, who's the boss, 
Women and men in biblical and cultural context will be back to that series, I believe, Lord willing, next week. We're going to be talking about some more on that. Uh, hopefully in the new year, what we're going to be doing is bringing on scholars to talk about some of the things that we've covered and some of the things we will be covering as we talk about uh, men and women and men in, in biblical and cultural context. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to upload these to uh YouTube as quickly as possible to our YouTube channel, KIC TV, Keep It In In Context TV. It'll be two videos you'll have to watch to get the whole thing, but we'll get it up there. Thank you again for joining us. God bless you. And Lord willing again, we will see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.